loved the Lord. That's why we're here this morning. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter number one. Luke, chapter number one. Oh, I'm excited. At least the next five weeks, we're going to be in Luke 1 and chapter 2. And uh, there's so much in these wonderful chapters of the Bible. We finished up with the book of Acts. And what a journey it was through the book of Acts. And in some ways, the book of Acts is a continuation of the book of Luke. You know, the book of Luke shares with us the life of Christ. The book of Acts shows us what happened as Jesus ascended up into ha heaven and what the disciples did there after. And wow, the book of Luke. And Luke, we know as uh, Paul said, Luke is the beloved physician. And Luke was not one of the 12 disciples but we do find Luke traveling with the Apostle Paul in the latter part of the book of Acts. And uh, Paul even calls Luke his fellow helper in Christ. And uh, here in uh, Luke chapter number one, we're going to find the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth. And uh, oh, Zacharias, he's a priest. He's going to go into the temple. Uh, there's a bunch of people outside the temple praying. And uh, Elizabeth and uh, Zacharias are barren. They have not, not been able to have children. And in the middle of that temple, God's going to meet with them and uh, deliver the news that they're going to have a child, which eventually becomes John the Baptist. And it's very interesting. I want you to take a moment, look, remain seated, look at Luke chapter number one, and look with me at verse number one. The Bible says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely what? Believed among us. And it continues. As you read those first four, chapter, or four verses, it's an introduction to the book of Luke. Uh, a group of people, they deliver what is most surely believed to Luke. Luke then takes that and he says, yeah, we agree with that, and delivers it to a man named Theophilus. Theophilus. Look at the latter part of verse 3 to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Read verse four with me. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. And the book of Luke is instruction. It's a guide. It's a map. It's a map to the life of Christ. Now, let's do this. Let's stand in honor of God's word. We're going to read from verse five through verse, uh, verse 16. And what we'll do is I'll read verse number five. And if we could read every other verse as we go, I'll start in verse number five. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Now, did you notice... Zacharias, Elizabeth, whoo, they were righteous. They were blameless. They were living for God. Amen. And by the way, I want to live for God. Amen. I would like to have it said of me, I'm righteous, I'm blameless. And by the way, as Christians, we'd like God to look down at us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Verse number uh, seven, it says, and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, now this is key, the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Say that little phrase with me. For thy prayer is heard. One more time. For thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, 
and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. We'll stop right there. Boy, this chapter, the book of Luke, is an introduction to the uh, the book of Luke, we find John the Baptist about to be born. We're going to find the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the midst of that, boy, it says, thy prayer is heard. Uh, the title of the message is, this morning is when prayers seem to be unanswered. It's good for Christians to pray. It's good for you to pray. It's good for me to pray. That's what Christians do. But sometimes when we go to the Lord in prayer, it seems like God's not listening. Sometimes we go to the Lord in prayer and it seems like he doesn't care. And you can imagine uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth asking the Lord for a child year after year after year. And it doesn't seem that the Lord hears, but God's got a better plan, a better timing. And uh, the title is When Your Prayers Seem to Be Unanswered. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. This is a good truth. And Lord, in reality, we often, as Christians, know we should pray, but struggle to pray. And Lord, I pray that you help us to get some proper context in what it means to pray. Help us to all learn a little bit from Luke chapter 1 about how we can go directly to you in prayer. But help us to be patient. Help us to go to you in the right spirit, the right way, Lord. We sure do love you. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, this morning, uh, the subject of prayer. As soon as I said prayer this morning, oh boy, we get a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit worried a little bit. Prayer, we know we ought to pray, but sometimes we as Christians do not pray. By the way, a Christian should pray, amen. Uh, I put this as Christians, we are knuckleheads, knuckleheads if we do not learn to pray. Uh, what does it say? We are knuckleheads if we don't know, learn to pray. The, you, you know, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the God of heaven, the, the God that created the, the earth and uh, the created man desires to hear from us. But the truth is sometimes we struggle to pray. We know we should pray. We know that we need to pray. We know that it's good to pray. And then we find ourselves not praying. I'll say that again. You know, we all struggle at times to pray. We know we should pray. We know that we need to pray. We know that it's good to pray. Then we find ourselves not praying. Oh, my flesh does not want to pray. You know, my spirit indeed is willing, but my flesh is weak. But there is another side of me, a side of me, the spiritual side, that desires to pray, that desires to be close to God. My spirit indeed is willing. It desires, it wants to have that close relationship with the Lord, but there is a battle with my flesh. My flesh is weak. I don't know if that battle rages in you or not, but that battle often rages inside of me. This morning, this uh, title is when your prayers seem to be unanswered. Sometimes when we do prayer, pray, it seems that uh, our prayers are not answered, but really I want to I start with this. Sometimes we have unanswered prayer because we fail to pray. Amen. I want to say that again. Sometimes we fail to get answers to pray, pray our prayers because we just simply do not pray. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Ye have not because ye ask not. Boy, you have not, you don't get answers to those prayers because you simply don't go to the Lord in prayer. By the way, can I just say this? Not praying is a sin. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And when you do not go to the Lord in prayer, it is called sin. First Samuel chapter 12 describes it like this. It says, God forbid that I should cease against the Lord, or sin against the Lord, ceasing to pray for you. Boy, it's a sin against the Lord when we do not pray. There's commands in the Bible. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, pray without ceasing. Boy, Luke chapter 18, verse 1 says it like this. It says uh, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Once again, prayer is a command. It's right to pray. It's what Christians do. Mark chapter 14, verse 38 says this. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. There is no substitute for the Christian to pray. There's no substitute for prayer. Your eloquence, your energy, your enthusiasm, your intellect, your money, there's no substitute for prayer. 
Boy, a Christian should pray. Sometimes we, though, do not get our prayers answered. Once again, for that simple reason, we do not pray. I want to read you a poem, and it's a good poem. It's a wonderful poem about prayer. I got up early one morning and rushed right into the day. I had so much to accomplish, I didn't have time to pray. Troubles just tumbled around me, and the heavier came each task. Why doesn't God help me, I wondered. He answered, you didn't ask. I wanted to see joy and beauty, but the day toiled on gray and bleak. I wondered why God didn't show me, but he said, you didn't seek. I tried to come into God's presence. I used all the keys in the lock. My God gently and lovingly chided, my child, you didn't knock. So I woke up early this morning and paused before I entered the day. I had so much to accomplish, I needed to take time just to pray. And by the way, that's a good truth right there. We have so much to accomplish, we need to stop and we need to pray. Truth be told, you want your prayers answered, you need to pray. So we get to this, sometimes our prayers seem to go unanswered. Uh, well, look with me at verse number, uh, verse number five, chapter number one of Luke, Luke chapter one, verse five. And I'm gonna say this, sometimes our prayers seem to go answered because God simply says no. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, what? Blameless. Sometimes our prayers seem to go unanswered because God simply says no. Now, this is interesting. We begin to think about the life of Zacharias and Elizabeth, it's obvious that they were in the will of the Lord. I mean, when you look at that, they're blameless, they're righteous, they're in the will of the Lord. Uh, you know, being in the will of the Lord, when, you, when you're in the will of the Lord and you begin to pray, and you think about that, when you begin to pray, we're to pray not my will, but thine be done. This is very, very, very important. When we go to the Lord in prayer, we're not to pray my, for my fleshly lust, my fleshly desires. We're to be praying, thy will be done. You, you realize that Zacharias and Elizabeth were in the will of the Lord. You know, in James chapter four, it really gives a little bit of insight in the importance of prayer. It says this though, James chapter four, uh, verse two, it says, ye have not because ye ask not. Then it goes, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Hey, you're asking, but you're not getting the answer to your prayer because you're not asking what the Lord desires for you. You're not asking in the Lord's uh, name, in other words, the Lord's uh, will uh, be done. You're asking in your own fleshly lusts. Uh, God sometimes does not answer our prayers because our prayers are selfish. Our prayers aren't centered on God, our prayers are centered on self. Uh, does, by the way, does that mean that God does not have any, uh, want you to pray for your personal needs? No, God wants you to pray for your personal needs. However, he says in the Bible, he's a God that supplies all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. However, God doesn't want you praying for your selfish, uh, your selfish um, carnal lusts, you might say. And there is a difference right there. We're going to be praying to be in the will of the Lord. Oh, God doesn't want you to feed your lust and your pride. Uh, God wants you to feed your spirit. Be not drunk with wine wherein is exit, but be filled with the spirit. L listen, if you're a friend of this world and you're asking God to make you a stronger person, uh, why should God give you more strength to serve the devil? Why should God answer that prayer and give you more strength so you can live a more glorious, sinful life? Boy, God's not interested in that. God wants you to live for him. He wants you to be like Zacharias. He wants you to be by Elizabeth, who are blameless, who are righteous. And praise God, they were different. Their prayers were not uh, prayers of the selfish kind. They were prayers of righteous and blameless people. By the way, prayer is not bending God's will to fit our will, but prayer is, in reality, finding the will of God and getting into his will. I should say that again. Oh, boy, I desire to be close to God in prayer. Obviously, you do too. But prayer is not bending God's will to fit my will. Prayer is trying to find God's will and then fitting our lives into his will. Boy, this is found 
all over the Bible. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says it like this. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, if we ask anything, that's prayer, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that, he, uh, that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And so sometimes, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we simply go to the Lord in the wrong way, in the wrong manner. We're seeking our fleshly desires. We're seeking the sin in our heart, not the will of God. And when we do that, God looks and he, he doesn't answer our prayer. In other words, he answers a different way. He says, no, 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 I'm not gonna answer that prayer. That's not a need, that's a fleshly desire. Now, we go back with me to verse number 13, Luke chapter one, verse 13. And it says, but the angel said unto him, what does he say? Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is what? Heard. Prayer is heard. Oh, this is interesting. Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And this is point number two. Sometimes our prayers seem to go unanswered because God is waiting for his perfect timing. Sometimes it seems like your prayer, sometimes my prayer is, is, is going unanswered. It's not unanswered, but it seems like it because we, God is waiting for his perfect timing. In other words, imagine Zacharias and Elizabeth. Boy, they're growing up in their Jewish uh, home, family. They learn the Bible. They go to the synagogue. Boy, there's a joyful life, a mom and a dad living for God, family that's close-knit, that's all about God. And next thing you know, you imagine one day uh, Zacharias looks over and he, he just notices Elizabeth and somehow that begins a relationship where they begin to have a courtship. And you can imagine the, the time of their wedding and their wedding comes along and they get glorious married, uh, married. They have a marriage right there and they're close-knit. They love each other. And imagine if a month, two months, three months, a year goes by and they may be expecting maybe have a baby, but that baby doesn't come. Imagine after maybe a, a year and a half, two years, and they're, they're hoping for a child, and you can see Zacharias looking over and saying, Elizabeth, man, let, let's stop. Our God loves us. Our God cares for us. We serve the King of Kings. He has the power to give us a baby. Let's just go to him in prayer. And imagine them as a couple bowing their head, and Lord, we love you. Lord, could you open my wife's womb? Could you give us a child? But another year goes by, no baby. Another year goes by, imagine they get to their late 20s, still no child. Year after year, they're praying. Imagine the encouragement. Boy, a, a priest comes by and says, hey, uh, you know, you guys haven't had a child, don't worry. God has timing and perfect timing. And boy, it could be this year. You know, your early 30s, you're gonna have a baby. But man, I can believe that God wants you to have a child. Uh, God can do great things. And another year goes by. Boy, they turn 35, 36, 37, 40 no child, they still pray, God, you can do it. Uh, imagine in some ways, maybe it's hard, some disappointment, a desire to have a child. God, don't you hear our prayers? God, don't you know we love you? God, don't you know? And then there comes a time when a woman's body turns away from being able to bear a child. They go through a, a season of life when it's just your body's not gonna have a baby anymore. And imagine that, it's, they're past that. But this section is amazing. Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. In a way, he's looking back and saying, hey, you know those prayers of the past when you were 19, 20, 21, 22, 25, 30? Hey, your prayer has been heard. Your prayer, it may not have seemed like your prayer was heard, but God heard your prayer. In reality, God had answered their prayer a long time ago, but God's, God's answer to that prayer was, hey, hey, we gotta wait for the perfect timing. It's not now, it's later. It's not in your 20s, it's not in your 30s, it's not in your 40s, it's the answer to your prayers when you're well stricken in age. Sometimes our prayers seem to be answered because God is waiting for his perfect timing. So interesting, Daniel chapter 10. This, this, the Bible's flooded with instances like this, but one example is Daniel chapter 10. Daniel went to the Lord in prayer. And then it says this, thy, it's about Daniel, God's saying to Daniel, thy words were heard, and I am come for 
thy words, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. God says, Daniel, I heard, I heard your prayers, but I had something I had to get done with the king of, of Persia for 21 days. In other words, it wasn't answered that day that, that Daniel prayed. He had to wait 21 days later, and then God answered that prayer. Boy, there's, there's verses like that in the Bible where God doesn't seemingly answer it in our time. But there, here's the point. It's not our timing that we want. We want his timing. I want to say it again. It's not our timing for that answer prayer. We desperately want to be in God's timing. God's timing is always, 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 always bad, better. I was 19. I got gloriously saved. Woo! I was excited. And I remember going to church and living for God. And boy, I just desperately wanted to find a good wife, a good Christian who could be my companion. And I, I was engaged to be married. And boy, that fell apart. And at 24, boy, there's no hope. And some of you are looking at me and say, yeah, pastor, there's not much hope. But God did a miracle. Amen. I got to be 25. And I prayed when I was 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. God, I, I'd like to be married. I'd like to, to be married to a good Christian woman. God seemed to close the door, close the door, close the door. But in reality, he had answered that prayer long before. He just had to get my wife Mandy in the right spot and me in the right spot where we could come together. God created Mandy for me and I was created for Mandy. And God answered my prayers a little older at 25, but that was God's perfect timing. Amen. Now, by the way, sometimes our prayers seem to go answered because God is waiting for his perfect timing. And when we wait for his perfect timing, part of it is that perfect timing brings glory, not to yourself, but glory to God. Okay, uh, did I lose you this morning? Well, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna pray, I wanna pray, but I wanna do it God's way. So we have to, if we want our prayers to be answered, it's very important that we put ourselves in the position to get our prayers answered. To get our, our prayers answered, we need to be not selfishly praying. We need to be praying in the will of the Lord. Look back with me at verse number 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. The angel said, you're going to have a baby. And, and you, you begin to look at this, God's perfect timing for Zacharias and, and Elizabeth was when they were old, when they were well stricken in age. Why? Because if, if they were given that child when they were young in this case, they praise the Lord for that, but it would but be an entirely different story. The birth of John, John the Baptist was a miracle that brought a lot of glory to God. It was a miracle. Sometimes when you and I pray, it seems like things don't get better, they get worse. Sometimes you pray and you expect an answer that day. You expect an answer that week. You expect an answer that year. And the situation doesn't seem to get better. And you go to the Lord in prayer. And that's the way it was for Zacharias and Elizabeth. Those years in their 20s, their 30s and 40s, God didn't seem to answer it right away. You know, it's been that way in the Bible. Do you remember Abraham and Sarah? God had promised Abraham and Sarah uh, a, a lineage like the multitude of stars up in, up in heaven. And year after year went, went and they, they didn't have a child. Do you remember what they did? They began to get discouraged and they took matters into their own hands. By the way, it's dangerous for you and I to take matters into our own hands and try to become and manipulate the situation. And what happened was they manipulated the situation and Abraham had a child with Hagar and there's still consequences to that sin even today. Many problems happen when we take matters into our own hands. But God had a plan. Abraham at 100, uh, Sarah at 90, they gave him a, a child, Isaac, and wow, praise the Lord, that delay brought him glory. Have you ever read the story? There's lots of stories like this, but have you ever read the story in John chapter 11 about Lazarus? You remember that? That's a tremendous, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, it says. And uh, there's Mary and Martha, their, their uh, brother Lazarus gets sick, they call Jesus, Jesus delays, and the disciples are looking, why are you delaying? Jesus looking at the disciples and says, this sickness is not a death, but this sickness is for the glory of God. After the delay, Jesus works his way over there to Bethany and he, he gets over to Bethany and Lazarus is dead. He's in the grave. Mary and Martha, they're weeping, they're crying. And why did you delay? Jesus 
corrects her in a, in a way and says, hey, this sickness is for the glory of God. He goes over to the tomb and says, Lazarus, come forth. He came out of that grave, grave clothes. It was a miracle. He was dead. God brought him to life, did he not? As you read that, the next chapter in John chapter 12 is speaking of the Jews. And the Jews says, by reason of him, Lazarus, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. God, God wanted to use Lazarus, allow him to get to the point where he was in the grave. Why? Because God needed that honor and glory. That delay, seeming delay, was actually God's perfect timing. And God's perfect timing brought glory to God. Oh, this is important. Sometimes our prayers seem to go answered because God is waiting for his perfect timing. This is an important. God sometimes has you wait. God sometimes has me wait, and in doing so, he gets glory. What's it all about? Is it about you? Is it about me getting glory? No, our life, we're to do all to the glory of God. That's what we're to do. And so when our prayer, our prayer is supposed to be a spiritual thing. It's supposed to be something where we get close to God. And so our prayer is not about us. Our prayer is reality, putting ourselves in a position where God can use us. Amen. Now, that is a different way of thinking about it. Sometimes in, in reality, if you're not careful, a lot of our prayers are selfish. A lot of our prayers are not about God, God's will, God's working, but it's about what I desire. It's really about us, cons uh, our, our fleshly lusts and our fleshly desires. Oh, as you continue to go, I'd like you to look at Luke chapter number uh, one again. I'd like you to look for at verse number 14. Remember, we're speaking of the, the delay, seeming delay is actually God's perfect timing. And that perfect timing brings glory to God. Look at verse 14. And it says, and thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth. And he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And eventually, it's interesting, God knew what was best for Elizabeth and Zacharias. He just knew. And so at this end, it was good. This John the Baptist is going to bring them joy. He's the forerunner of Christ. And in Luke chapter 7, it says it like this. It says, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. And that, that, there's not, born of woman, there's not a greater than John the Baptist. And John, uh, Zacharias and uh, Elizabeth uh, were able to bear, bore, bore that child or they were born that child in old age. Now, sometimes our prayers seem to go answered because God has something better, a better plan. You know, they'd been praying, uh, praying from an early age for a child from a youth, but God gave them a, a child in their old age. And boy, this is important as you read this. Uh, God's timing is best. In, in other words, I, I want to read a verse from Psalm chapter 84. It says this, The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. There's no good thing that, that, um, that he will withhold from them that walk uprightly. I'll read another verse in a second, but it's hard to explain. What is your perspective of God? Is God, God trying to withhold things from you? Is try, God trying to, to push you down? Is God trying to make your life miserable? And sometimes that's what we think. We're looking God, at God wrong. God, God loves you. God cares for you. There, God wants what's best for you. God wants you to have joy. God wants you to have peace. God, God wants to supply all of your need. He's not, he's not, he's not a, a God that hates you, that's trying to suppress you. And sometimes it's our wrong perspective of, of God. But if we go to God with the realization he does not want to withhold from them that, that walk up broadly. Another way, it's worded in Psalm 34, verse 10. It says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. They that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You seek God, boy, he's going to take care of you. You're not going to want of any good thing. In other words, God has a better plan than you. God has a better plan than me. And boy, God doesn't withhold anything good from you. 
sometimes if we're not careful, we whine and we complain. God, I want it and I want it now. And, and really in doing so, we have a lack of faith and belief that God is in control. We have a lack of faith and belief that God is, is able to, to take care of us. He has something better than we asked. I read about a man who had a, uh, as a kid, he wanted a car. And I think it was his uncle who was selling a car for $180. And this kid was excited. He said, I want that car. And he, he got on his knees and said, God, give me $180 so I can buy that car. I need that car. I need transportation. $180. God, please give me that car. I know it's what I need. And uh, he didn't get the car. Sold. But, but, you know, it's interesting because the man he sold it to a couple weeks later, the engine actually fell out of the whole thing. And he looked back and he said, man, I'm glad I didn't get that car. But, you know, it's a funny little illustration, but sometimes that's the way it is with us. I need this. I need this. I need it. You ever seen a child or a little baby? I need this. I need. They don't really know what they need. And often we're like that little child. We don't know what we really need. Ah, boy, you can almost say, Lord, sometimes we, we should say, Lord, thank you for not hearing my prayer and uh, allowing that to happen in my life. Thank you, Lord, for saying no. Thank you, Lord, for your timing. And in reality, often we have no idea what we really need. I want to say that like from the top of my lungs. Sometimes we have no idea what we really need. Romans chapter 8 says it like this. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. God did not give Zacharias and Elizabeth what they asked for when they asked for it. God's plan was better. And sometimes we just have no idea what we really need. You know, in, in a way, the, the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come Thy will be done. That's the model prayer. And it's a reminder when we go to the Lord, almost we're saying like it says in Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, trust in the Lord with all thy, thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And really our, our prayer is sometimes we don't know what we need. Lord, we come to you. I lay my, my life to you. I give my life to you. Lord, what do you desire out of me today? What do you want me to do with my money? What do you want me to do with my time? What do you want me to do with my energy? By the way, uh, often we are given clear instructions through the word, amen. That's another sermon in and of itself. Uh, but praise God for that guidance. Zacharias had asked for a, a child and uh, his timing was better. There's an interesting story about an old preacher in, uh, down in Florida. And he, he pastored a church that uh, him and his wife were part of. The, the church was a part of a Bible college or very closely uh, associated with a Bible college. And he was preaching a message where, boy, a lot of the Bible college folks were there. His church was there. And in his sermon, uh, he began to preach. And he said, I never got to go to the school, the Bible school I wanted to go to. And right there, he's preaching to his alma mater, his uh, school that he'd went to. And then he says, uh, I as God didn't let me marry the woman I wanted to marry. And his wife's sitting right out there. And then he said, God never let me pastor the church that I wanted to pastor. And his church folks are out there. And you know, that's almost embarrassing. God never did give me anything I ever wanted. And that, that's what he said. And then at the very last he said, but God always gave me something better than I ever wanted. And that's the truth right there. God's will is so much better than our will. And you see the close-knit alignment of praying and God's will. Boy, this is a great truth. In reality, God gives the best to those who leave the choice to him. God gives the best who say, hey, I don't know much. I'm, I must decrease. He must increase. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes uh, God's uh, will is in different timing. Now, uh, we're at the end. We're at the very end of the sermon. Praise the Lord. A sermon on prayer, Luke chapter number one. Now what to do when we're praying and our prayers to seem unanswered. I really want to encourage you. If you pray, you should pray, but your prayers seem unanswered. You, you should really check, number one, are you right with the Lord? Outwardly, you can look great, but inwardly, are you right with the Lord? 
are you also, are you not only right with the Lord, but are you seeking his glory? Are you asking for his will to be done? Are you submissive to his will? And I believe when we go to the Lord in prayer with that spirit, boy, God, God can work in a great way. Brother Randy, you and I were out yesterday and uh, out soul winning. Do you remember that? You don't remember that? You were, you were there, but you weren't there. And so, okay, you didn't look like you were there very much. But we went out and uh, there was a parade happening down over by the Chesapeake Municipal Center. And so we went down there and there's all these chairs lined up and we were gonna go there and meet some folks, but we're also gonna put a gospel booklet in each of those chairs or every other chair. And as we're going down there, we saw a young man uh, sitting at the bus stop. His name was Kai. He was at the bus stop, 17 years of age, and very interesting. Uh, began to open up. Do you go to church? He said, no, I used to be uh, part of the Jehovah Witnesses. And very open. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? He said, I'm not sure. But wow, he was an open, just open to the whole gospel. We went there and he spent probably 20 minutes with the feller, gave him the gospel about how we're all sinners, the price for our sin is hell, but Jesus paid the price for our sin. It's not our goodness that ever gets us to heaven, it's Jesus and Jesus alone. And then as we got there, I said, hey Kai, would you like to stop and pray and ask the Lord to save you? By the way, think about this, prayer. We know when praying that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We know now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance right there. God's will for Kai was to stop right there and trust Christ as a savior. And so Kai, all of a sudden he looked and he said, yes. And you should have heard his prayer. At that one point, you remember he got there, he was sort of loud. But he got to that point, Lord, I'm a sinner, I deserve hell. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross, you're not of works. They got to, Lord, save me. And he lifted up his voice loud right there. It was almost shockingly how loud he said, Lord, save me. That's God's will. God wanted him to be saved right there. And Kai trusted, it was so interesting. We got done with explaining how Jesus paid for all your sins. And right at the very end, here comes the bus. It was like God's perfect time right after it was all done right there. But God, God wants you to pray. God doesn't want you to pray selfishly. God wants you to pray in his will. God wants you to be patient. Sometimes God says no because, yeah, just because his timing's better than your timing. And you just have to trust him. God is good. We're gonna stop. We're gonna go to the Lord in prayer as a church. And we ought to be as the disciples have a humble heart. The disciples looked at Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. As we go to pray, let's ask the Lord in the in, and have a humble spirit and ask God to work. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. It's a hard subject in some ways, prayer. And many times we all feel inadequate. And uh, when we started, Lord, sometimes we don't get our prayers answered because we simply don't pray. Help us to be a congregation that not only talks about prayer, reads about prayer, but Lord, we actually do pray. And Lord, help us to have the right spirit as we go to pray. Help us to be humble. Help us to be patient. Help us to not uh, ask amiss that we may consume it upon our own lusts. Help us then to be patient to see that sometimes, though we don't see the results right away, that you have answered that prayer. God, thank you for the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth. And Lord, I do pray for some folks that are struggling today, struggling with patience, struggling in their prayer to be selfish. Help them to realize that's not good. And Lord, help us to uh, help us have the right concept of you. Help us to realize that you're a good God, that you want what's best for us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you work mightily in the invitation, Lord, if there's a soul here that's never been saved, I pray that this would be the day of salvation for them. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. Stand with me if you will.